This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show. Up on this episode we kick off our first of three planned December Listener Choice episodes. This is a tradition that we've been carrying out for it's close to nine years now on Podcast Under the Stairs where we turn over control of the movie selection to you guys, the listeners, via our Facebook group page, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cast. We always give you three categories. The first category is always Dream Christmas Horror Review. That is a horror Christmas movie that we've never covered on the podcast Under the Stairs. So that list gets smaller every single year. We have as our second topic, and the one that will be coming up next Monday, Dream True Crime Documentary. That is the counterbalance to all the Christmas cheer. And then our last one kind of changes from year to year depending on my mood. I've decided to do it as a discussion with myself and Bo Ransdell this year. You guys have selected what you want for that topic to be and we're going to run exactly an hour and not a minute over on that episode as well. So yeah, that's going to be fun and quirky and see if we can actually manage to rein in our conversation to just an hour. On this episode, it was Dream Christmas Horror Movie Review. You guys have selected unanimously by a relatively clear margin, Silent Night, Bloody Night from 1972. That review will be coming up after the first break. We also have a lot of content coming out this month, so you probably already noticed a few episodes have dropped. That will continue happening one every single day all the way up until December 24th, Christmas Eve. And then we're closing the doors on the podcast for a good few weeks. So we'll have a couple of weeks off over the Christmas break to recharge, refuel and get ourselves back in the mood to come back with our first episode of 2024 being our top 20 horror movies from 2023. I've still got quite a few to catch up with, so that's how I'll be spending my two week off break. Okay, let's do this. Your pick was Silent Night, Bloody Night, 1972. We're going to take our first break when we come back. After the trailer for the movie, we'll be discussing it right after this. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was left living. His hands. Somebody cut off his hands. Silent Night, Bloody Night, starring Patrick O'Neill and Astrid Heron. Yeah, Butler wasn't kidding. Nobody's lived here for years. Don't laugh at me. I want your ID. Some maniac escaped from Margaretville. Would you like to drive there? Also starring John Carradine. Was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was left living. <laughs> Silent night. Bloody night. Never seen it before. Blind spot for me. Um, didn't know anything at all about it. And on top of that as well, I suppose the big thing for me was what sort of movie is this going to be overall? Like, 72 is a weird transitional year for American horror in particular. The UK, we're still struggling with kind of period set horror movies, kind of transitioning through the folk horror of like a Witchfinder General or a Blood and Satan's Claw. We're a year away from Wicker Man. In America, you are at the same time getting Last House on the Left, comes out the same year, 
but you are transitioning as well from the kind of splatter horror of a Herschel Gordon Lewis, which is going to be, you know, still prevalent in the 70s, but you're moving away from the idea of creatures and monsters um, as being your, or science to an extent, as being your your kind of, your villains, your, your antagonists, into more a kind of grounded realism of actually man themselves is the is the most dangerous creature of all so you get this really cool thing in the in the 70s though with kind of independent regional horror and arrow video did two box sets the american horror projects which had a series of movies curated by stephen thrower the art kind of horror critic and author um which are really good examples of kind of the stuff that was flying around. People like George A. Romero are a good reason for a lot of filmmakers. They'll cite him as the reason they picked up a camera and went to shoot something out in the hills or surrounding areas of where they grew up with a troop of people they grew up with that had time to do it. The interesting thing about this one overall is it has a relatively stalwart cast. These are a lot of people that will appear in a lot of horror movies before and after. So I was expecting a degree of quality on this one and whilst a lot of the premise and the story of Silent Night, Bloody Night work for me, huge swaths of it are so rough that they're, they're kind of off-putting and then on top of that as well there is, a, there is a slowly revealing plot that's going through this one through flashbacks which I think maybe at the time stood up a bit better than they do now. I pretty quickly pegged who I thought might be, who might be the person behind this, or what might be going on. Um, and whilst there is a twist upon a twist at the end, which kind of throws a lot of that under the bus, most of what I thought I knew panned out in the movie. It shot really kind of low quality, it's of the era, of the time and of the budget. So you get that kind of regional woozy kind of surreal realism about the about the kind of shooting overall the story is about a couple who buy or inherit i should say more than buy this kind of old mansion house which at one time was a psychiatric hospital but bad things happened in this hospital and maybe the movie is kind of pivoting to potentially some site some kind of supernatural entity maybe the movie's pivoting towards some kind of real killer that's still in the, the building um, maybe a hangover from one of the patients or maybe even on top of that as well the movie is putting to you that actually this could be uh, someone influenced uh, by the idea that someone I would say influenced and at the same time upset that someone might be trying to do something to a property which holds a great degree of fear in the township it's got a plodding pace it's not a long movie it's about an hour and 20 minutes an hour and 25 tops and it really belabors the point conversations are long uh, kind of staticky shots uh, very little in the way of background noise or music so it kind of just hangs and at times it felt a bit like a stage play as well, which kind of caught me on the back foot. The deaths aren't really all that spectacular, if I'm honest. And there aren't a huge amount of them. For a movie that's called Silent Night, Bloody Night, you would expect it to really lean on to that word bloody um, and give you some like proper good old-fashioned gruesome death. You don't really get that in this movie. Weirdly, it's kind of almost against the title. The title seems fairly salacious, but the movie itself is a bit more cerebral. It kind of sets itself up for those, what's that up the stairs? What's that behind the wall? Who's on the other side of the door? Did I hear a noise? It's that sort of thing. With a black glove killer, which is always great to see from my point of view. But the overall reveal at the end of this movie, and we do spoilers on podcasts under the stairs, and this movie is now 50 years old, so... Let's be honest, I'm not really spoiling it. Um, and if, you can always hit pause. Always hit pause and go and check it out and come back. The reveal here is our main antagonist um, is the father who run 
the ward. I think that's who he was supposed to be. And he actually molested his daughter, who turns out to be the main protagonist protagonist in this one who was taken away and put in care yet somehow managed to come back to this town and somehow managed to find herself back where she is and of course all the trauma kicks in and she shoots the shit out of her dad at the end of this movie and it kind of felt like the ending was like a really cool idea but they just maybe didn't give it enough thought through they didn't plan out all the individual steps and as a result it, it did kind of leave me going huh right so she got she was taken away, but ultimately ended up back where she came from. That's a coincidence. And then he just like lived like a homeless person. And said, what kind of reminded me of, if anyone seen Cropsey in the documentary, there's a people just living in that insane asylum on Long Island, which just, or Staten Island. Is it Staten Island? Staten Island. Um, which just feels fucking weird, but apparently some people do that. It's like, it's, you know, it's structures, there's roofs over your head, it's waterproof. If you're homeless, derelict, or wanting to live off the grid, those are the sort of places you go. But why he would be there, why he would be doing what he's doing, all this stuff is kind of left up to the audience. I'm not going to say I'm against that. I don't like movies necessarily hand-holding me through everything that happens. But at the same time, I do kind of like a little bit of a, right, this is why this happened. And it really doesn't give you that. The flashback scenes as well get longer as the movie goes on. So at first, there are maybe about a minute in length. There was a scene towards the end of this movie where it ran for about like five, six minutes. And I genuinely thought this was like closing out the movie. It was like some sort of like Shining-esque ending where we were going back into the gold room. Um, but no, uh, it's purely there to pad time. You don't get a lot from those flashbacks except a lot of kind of disorientating cinema. Um, and snippets of dialogue which kind of hold weight but at the same time if you missed them you would still work out this ending so overall it was a really frustrating watch for me I am not surprised I hadn't seen it before like I said um, before I'd seen the poster at least and I knew the name but I never watched it and I think the reason I never rushed out to watch this one is probably reputationally speaking it doesn't actually have a lot of people championing for it which is really interesting because you guys did you went hard for it which makes me think either you wanted me to re review a movie that you kind of thought I wouldn't like which I wouldn't put it past you or you wanted me to review a movie that you really did like and if that's the case that's kind of awesome that you really liked it to me I've just seen this sort of stuff done a lot better and from around the same time period it's great seeing people like Mary Warnov appear, like Patrick O'Neill, like like proper stalwarts of the genre, John Carradine, um, appearing in roles here. It's kind of cool to see that. But even then, they're not really utilised as much or as well as they probably could have been. And as a result, that kind of becomes a bit of a wet blanket as well overall in the movie. It's paced pretty poorly. I can forgive it. It's kind of lo-fi kind of cinematography. And they act in, in script to an extent because that's budgetary and understand that. And it's a kind of DIY regional indie rural horror movie. So that kind of, it's par for the course. But it's padded a lot. It's suspense isn't really great. The deaths don't go nearly as far as they probably should for the title. And like I say, the ending has you in a position where you must suspend a lot of your disbelief for quite a bit for it to kind of hold together and make sense. So I didn't hate it, but I, I, I would really struggle to say I like this movie. I found myself very frustrated by the whole process as I worked my way through it, and then by the end of it, I kind of felt like I personally had missed something that other people had picked up on. I don't know if I'll ever go back to it as well. I think even if I had a conversation with someone and they explained elements I'd missed, I don't know if I'd be in a hurry to go and check it out again. I'm glad I did watch it, because, like I say these particular series that we do every year allows me the opportunity to watch some movies that I've never seen before like Elves um, and review ones that I had seen many times before but never properly reviewed like A Black Christmas for example so it's ticked off the list now but if you love this one more power to you to me this was a bit of a slog and as a result I give this movie a 2.5 out of 5
it's right in the middle. I respect it for a lot of what it does, but also a lot of what it does frustrates the living fuck out of me. There you go. So there we are. That was your dream Christmas horror movie review. I gave it 2.5 out of 5 for Silent Night, Bloody Night. Next Monday, we will be doing your pick of dream true crime documentary. I've got a guest, Darren Wilson, from the Psycho Semanticast, joining me to do that one. He always joins me on these episodes. We're doing Mr. Organ, which is now available on, I believe it's is it Hulu, I think, in the States. In the UK, you'll have to do a bit of searching to find it, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, it's the new documentary from the team behind Tickled. So, yeah. We'll see how you get on with that one. Infinitely weird. Infinitely bizarre. Was talking about it for about three days after I watched it. Uh, we've already recorded it. We recorded it like two weeks ago. It's a, a ton of fun and that is coming next week for you. In between all those episodes, you're getting the Silent Night in Pieces series, where we take the movie Silent Night from 2012, we break up into five minute reviewable chunks, I get podcasters to join me to review those five minute segments, but I release it out of linear order, so like minute 35 might be the first episode that gets released, and minute, you know, zero to five might be the last. Like, the order is all mixed up. They'll be in between all those Monday episodes right up to the end of our podcasting year. On the 24th, we will release our Christmas Eve episode. That'll feature The Baz. We're doing a listener pick choice, which is Near Dark, which I'm very excited for because you gave us a movie that I fucking love. Um, and we just hope that Baz does as well. There is a multitude of ways to check out what we're doing and keep up with us. If you're checking us out on YouTube, please hit a like and a subscribe. In the comments, let me know, do you like Silent Night, Bloody Night? I'd be genuinely curious to see how many people actually really like this one. Is this one that's in your rotation every Christmas? Uh, once again, we'd love to know that. If you're more in line with me, I would love to hear why it is that you think the movie doesn't resonate with you. Let's start a dialogue over there, please. So there's that. On top of that, if you're checking us out on Spotify or on Anchor, using their apps for podcasts that give you the video, there'll be a little question that pops up at the end of this episode as well. Make sure you hit subscribe there as well. And lastly, if you're checking out the audio version on any of the podcatchers out there, please hit subscribe. That way you get the shows as and when they drop and access to the almost 1,300 episodes of podcasts under the stairs date back over 10 years now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me for this episode. We'll be back tomorrow for Silent Night in Pieces, another one of those installments. But wherever you are, what the time zone is, and what you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from Under the Stairs, and I am signing off.
And welcome back. So, you've just seen the trailer for Silent Night, Bloody Night from 1972. This movie is available on Prime. It's a foreign language version of it, so I think it might be either Spanish or German, uh, and it is subtitled. Or you can watch the full English version on YouTube, which a relatively good quality copy is up there for you to check out. Now, I believe from doing a quick bit of research online, this movie may have had rights issues which have lapsed. And as a result, I think this movie now exists in the public domain, which is probably why there's a really good quality copy up on YouTube and no one is contesting it. So it is there if you want to go and check it out. This was a blind spot for me. I'd never seen this movie. I'd heard of it and I'd seen the poster before, but I knew very little of anything about it. You guys, like I said, in the upfront, selected this one unanimously. This one was, uh, well, I was going to say it wasn't even close. It was close, but it wasn't that close. So I sat down to check it out for the first time and I will give you some details on that movie right now. Silent Night, Bloody Night, released in 1972, directed by and co-written by Theodore Grishuni. It also has Ira Teller and Jeffrey Convitz as co-writers. The movie stars Patrick O'Neill, James Patterson, Mary Warnov, Astrid Heeren, John Carradine, Walter Rabel, Fran Stevens, Walter Clunven, Philip Burns, Stat Cotworth, and Tally Brown. There are some other people in this movie as well, but they're more backing characters. Synopsis for this one is, a man inherits a mansion which once was a mental home. He visits the place and begins to investigate some crimes that happened in old times, scaring the people living in the region. So like I say, complete blind spot for me, never seen this one before. Don't know what I was expecting, to be honest with you. 